In They Shall Not Grow Old, director Peter Jackson and the Imperial War Museum seek to bring the First World War to life, to give a sense of what that conflict was like to live through for the soldiers in it. It does that through a number of techniques, not just extensively restoring the footage, but also colorizing it, dubbing in sound, using voiceovers from oral histories of the First World War spoken by people who served in it, and by converting the footage to 3D. At first, the film is almost reserved in how it approaches the footage. You're looking at some relatively restored black and white silent footage, which is quite jumpy, like we're used to seeing that footage being. The opening of the film, in fact, starts with an almost postage stamp size piece of footage in the middle of the screen, and it slowly zooms out as the recollections of the beginnings of the war are played. With the story of the soldiers portrayed roughly in chronological order, once they reach the front line, the film bursts into full colour and full 3D. All that marketing around the film bringing the First World War to life really means that the cinematic experience of it is immersive. There's very few titles in the film, and the colour does an amazing job, almost an uncanny job, of making the film seem real. Which is to say it seems modern. Of course, footage from that time is real, whether or not it's in colour. Obviously it wasn't shot in 3D, the footage, so it has to be post-converted, and what that means is rotoscoping, a lot of drawing around individual elements in the frame, and then pulling them out to make a kind of fake representation of parallax, that sensation you get when you watch something in real life move around, uh, which is imitated in 3D films. Unfortunately, because of the complexity of some of the imagery, the 3D post-conversion doesn't really work very well, and is often distracting. You can see someone walking walking in front of a complex background with little bits of that background still in the foreground because of the way that the parallax conversion has worked. That's a problem you'll find even with modern films that feature fog or really cluttered battlegrounds, which of course this footage shows. But it doesn't just have that problem, it also has all of the problems around the restoration as well. And so in my opinion, the 3D really serves to pull you out of the film more than putting you in. What really surprised me was that the most immersive thing in the film wasn't the 3D or the colour, but instead the sound design in the film. The voiceovers, which are all real recorded voiceovers from actual soldiers who served in that conflict, are from oral histories that were recorded, you know, many, many years ago. And hearing their voices really brings to life those horrible stories you hear about from that war. But also the film is fully sound designed, and so you'll look at a crowd of Tommies milling around in a field, and you can hear them chattering to each other. There's even sections of the film where they've obviously worked out what someone was saying through lip reading, and then dubbed in an actor's voice for that. The results were really chilling, because you get a real insight into what the lives of everyday soldiers in that conflict were like even when the cameras are there rolling and the soldiers are obviously looking directly at the camera because just having a camera there wasn't an everyday occurrence. The film really doesn't shy away from the realities and the horrors of the First World War. You can see lots of footage of corpses in this film, uh, both as you know moving footage and as still photography, so if that's a problem for you then don't watch this film, it's, it's absolutely full of that. And they also feel much more real than previous archive photography I've seen because, you know, you can see the red of the blood on those corpses. You can hear the flies buzzing around the mass graves. And there's something about even just seeing artillery fire and watching shingles fall off a roof nearby, but actually being able to hear those shingles falling that makes that conflict feel like one that's so much more present and modern and something we can learn from more now. Ultimately, the film's greatest gift is those voiceovers of soldiers who actually served in that conflict which give us a real human connection to the soldiers who are shown on screen. And it's not just that, it's them looking at the camera, often smiling cheekily, a change in their day just seeing a camera there, that makes you feel this constant human connection with those soldiers on screen. After the compassion that the film shows for the soldiers in the conflict, both British and German, and there's lots of footage, by the way, of German soldiers as prisoners with the British soldiers, just kind of chumming around, which is stuff that I've never seen, and I think that's a side of the conflict that we really don't talk about. The film has a really interesting last trick up its sleeve, which is that after the conflict is complete and we're looking at footage of veterans returning to society, the image turns back to black and white and starts to recede again to that postage stamp. It's a powerful moment in the film when it also looks at how much the British society at the time basically rejected these soldiers coming home, that there were jobs that veterans were encouraged not to apply for because they wouldn't get them. I don't often review documentaries on this channel, partially because I don't feel like I can talk about them as much in terms of their craft, but I do think this film ultimately achieves what it sets out to do, which is away from any sort of propaganda just to educate 
the audience on what happened in that conflict and what it was like for the British people who experienced it. If you've seen this film and you want to talk about any of the themes raised in it or any of the kind of craft that went into it, then let's have that discussion in the comments down below. That's it from me. Have a good one. Bye for now.